Um, welcome to all of you for this uh, 50 minute session on education on technology for human security for all. It is the first session organized um, in the name of the Vienna Declaration uh, as part of this conference. The Vienna Declaration is a project on a cultural approach to sustainability and human security for all. WAS was one of its funding partners. Before I handle the floor to the panelists, let me introduce myself very briefly. Uh, I'm the founder and holder of the UNESCO Chair on Global Understanding for Sustainability at the Friedrich Schiller University in Vienna, here in Germany, and the initiator of the Vienna Declaration, a WAS Fellow, and the chair. Uh, we have plenty of time uh, for discussion, first among the panelists, and then the questions submitted by the viewers through the for for a first, very brief self-introduction by the speakers. Ladies first, Ivka, you have the floor. Okay, thank you very much, Benno. I'm very, very happy to participate in this session. Uh, and um, short introduction from my side. I'm professor for information management and engineering in the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering in the Carlson Institute of Technology. And uh, in the same time, director for uh, intelligent system and production technology uh, in the Center for Computer Science uh, in Karlsruhe. So my background is engineering, uh, dig digital technologies and engineering. And uh, um, I'm really very, very interested in the dialogue we will uh, do today. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, next one, um, Vitor. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, thank you very much for having me over here. It's, it's extremely important topic. Um, I couldn't be more happy uh, to participate in this discussion. Thank you very much also, uh, Benno, for organizing a number of things to make it clear and impactful. I, I'm sure we, we achieve at least 10% of it. <laughs> um, I'm a professor at, um, at the University in Canada. Uh, I'm professor of electrical and computer engineering. My background is uh, computer engineering, chip design, um, and signal processing development of um, uh, extracting information and meaning from data. Um, I also participated very much in uh, large technical organizations, uh, IEEE. Uh, I was vice president for education over there and played many, many roles. I was also the director of, of that organization in Canada. It has over 420,000 members. So it's, it's a, a fairly impactful, not only in one country, but around the globe, uh, interacts with uh, uh, U the UN and many organizations, and I'm extremely happy to um, also be a part of uh, WAS. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, next and last one, uh, Walt, please. Uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, it's a privilege to be with you today. Uh, I'm a business executive and entrepreneur in the tech sector. I um, started my career um, with IBM and then moved into consumer electronics. And uh, currently, I'm chairman of a trade group called ProSource, which is 600 companies in the electronics, consumer electronics sector. And we're involved in um, standard setting and education, and also in uh, negotiating with uh, major, major manufacturers. And I'm a director of the Human Security for All campaign. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, our overarching question is uh, how technology education can meet uh, humanity, human security uh, in general and what could be the contribution of, uh, of technology, all kinds of technological tools, I guess. So the first question is what are your experience with education uh, on technology for human security for all, and in what field did you make them? What, where did you see? Do you see the strengths, and where are you seeing perhaps the difficulties to overcome? On one side, how much time is attributed to education for technology in different levels of schooling at university, and so on, and then also also public uh, uh, problems. Okay, uh, maybe the same. Row again, uh, Yvka, if you might. Okay, thank you very much. 
Um, as I said, I'm uh, very strongly involved in the engineering education uh, using uh, digital technologies. I made a PhD in uh, mechanical engineering and computer sciences, and uh, I have also very strong, uh, strong background in virtual reality. So uh, I see that the trends towards uh, um, teaching uh, um, on technology for human security in future should be very strongly influenced by the merging of uh, the both realities, physical and uh, not physical or virtual reality. We are living in a time where these uh, two realities are merging and building a so-called expanding reality. Um, this is um, my uh, absolutely high priority in teaching to uh, bring this topic to the students. I, I teach in the university, but also vocational uh, and professional training for, uh, for industrial companies uh, to understand that we live in this digital or virtual world. This is not just a digital technology we use in our uh, physical life, but we uh, live in the same time also in this expanding reality. And uh, that in future we will have less uh, material resources and we will create more added value uh, using uh, non-material assets than uh, creating value uh, with material assets. So this is very important also to address a huge number of aspects, not only the security, but also the protecting of the nature, increasing efficiency, dealing in an intuitive human-oriented way uh, with such technologies. Uh, and therefore, I wanted to start really with this, uh, uh, with this statement uh, that for me, uh, the future of education takes place in one reality which is a mixture or a fusion of the physical and the virtual reality. So not to feel um, afraid from the digital technology, but to, uh, really to learn intuitively to behave and to, uh, uh, to work uh, in this, uh, um, yeah, this digital reality. So um, therefore, uh, my experiences, I, um, I teach already 20 years in the university in virtual engineering, uh, simulation, uh, using also augmented or mixed reality, um, with extension now to put more and more artificial intelligence uh, uh, and uh, IoT aspects um, uh, in this education. Um, so probably I will stop uh, at this point uh, and uh, we'll add uh, some comments later on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we told with the same question. So what are yes. your experiences yes. with education on technology? Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to really um, uh, follow up on what you've got mentioned, uh, that it is a mixture. But above all, it is also the purpose of education. And um, above all, it is the recognition that each and every person is different. So the Prussian model of education, that we have to produce as many um, workers on assembly lines and teach one program to everybody, that must be eradicated from our approaches today. We have to move from one fits all to one fits one. Uh, we learn by discovering, not acquiring skills of surviving, but discovering how we have could have a value in contributing to the process. As uh, Gary Jacob or, or Jacobs always mentioned, it is really what we are that the world would be not what the world is and we could be in it, but perhaps a mixture of both. Consequently, I put a lot of effort with my friends to develop uh, personalized systems of uh, instructions, the SI that was developed by Fred Keller in the 60s when he went to help uh, Brazil in learning. Brazil did not have the capacity of learning so many people, so many different aspects. Um, but it was really uncanny. It was done prior to the computers. We've changed this to computer-aided personalized system of instruction. The system was done in the 70s, is used in heavily today. The idea over here, it is not that teacher teaches students, but there is a mentor of learning, and each student becomes a teacher. 
So it is a, a concept that was based on some of the Skinner's developments um, in the in the west of the US. But it was really that component. Then the second idea was uh, to develop personalized um, experiential learning. And I've developed many courses that op operate on the experience learned and em embodied in the activities. Um, I also developed um, a computer engineering program, not only one place, but many places. I developed uh, my electronic center, but uh, right from the beginning of my activities, I paid attention to STEAM. I would like STEM um, to uh, include uh, A. A stands not for arts only, but for awareness of others, uh, awareness of the environment, awareness of us living somewhere. And not just happily, not in pursuit of happiness, but pursuit of discovery and the discovery of others, not oneself. So moving from me to we. And that movement, obviously, is fundamental to our survival, I think. Uh, in order to uh, do that, however, connectivity is very important. Um, I was extremely happy and utilizing internet, contributed to internet, to software, to cognitive networks and other things. But I have moved now to low Earth orbit satellites and systems. And I'm leading now a, a project that would include uh, the thousands of satellites we have to move also to communities that will not be connected with the present technology. It is to uh, indigenous students, thousands of people speaking tens or hundreds of languages that haven't been touched. We've ignored them as if they were, as, as we discovered America, uh, similarly discovering that there is nobody somewhere. We are everywhere. It is the presence that must be recognized. So uh, space for connectivity. And this is not just connectivity, but also developing the ability to deliver food, medicine through totally different mechanisms of connectivity. Uh, then uh, I've also been doing a lot of work in uh, machine learning, and we are developing a um, very developed number of things for security. Uh, detection of anomalies, detection of things, protection of an individual. That goes very much along the lines of what UN wants to accomplish too. But how to do it? And that we discovered in that process that just doing protection is not enough. We have to have mentors. We have to have tools that will protect us uh, if, and from becoming now uh, entering slavery 4.0, where we are being sold without even knowing that we are being sold. Um, that requires a new approach altogether that utilizes all of the developments. And that is digital twin, cognitive digital twins. We are working very hard on symbiotic digital twins. I call them symbionts and also mimetic digital twins, cognitive digital twins. We will call them memions. They are not only assistants in our learning, acquiring skills, but learning and discovering and doing things better, but also will unequivocally are designed to protect us, not to make us new slaves of new environments. So it is an important component in the developments, I think. So I would like to stop at this level. Ah, Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for this extended overview and uh, making many, many important points uh, before I enter into the debate uh, with uh, Walt, please. Okay, first I want to say, Wittold, uh, that's fascinating. I'm really uh, interested in your work and um, particularly fascinated by the digital twins concept, but all of your work and your work with the IEEE in particular. Um, my experience um, in uh, education um, is uh, to help companies grow. Um, I have spent my entire career developing trade organizations that are designed to address uh, challenges of growth in technology companies. and. Um, 
most recently um, in the trade organization ProSource that I'm chairman of, we've developed um, a three-pronged approach to technology education. Um, we've developed an academy, which is a hands-on um, educational system to develop um, trade skills in the technical field. Uh, that's become very important because there's a shortage of trained technical people uh, that can actually deploy technology effectively, particularly at the consumer level. Um, so um, we've attempted to address that by creating um, these academies that allow companies to hire people based on their intelligence and character and uh, not so much on their experience level. And we can uh, get boot camp them into an entry level position. And from there, uh, we can uh, get them into uh, hands on in the field training and turn them into productive employees. Uh, the second thing that we've done is create a, a university. Uh, I call it a university in, a, in the loose sense of the term. It's basically digital online learning with uh, structured uh, programs that are um, uh, delivered um, digitally and, and uh, graded and the information is passed on to the employer um, about the, the person's progress and curriculum, specific curriculum to address a particular individual's needs can be developed and, um, and, and individualized for each employee. So that's the second thing that we're doing. And the third thing that we're doing is peer-to-peer -peer learning at the, um, at the executive level, at the CEO level. What we've found is that as companies grow, CEO skill set dramatically changes. The skill set requirements dramatically change. And as a consequence of that, uh, a lot of CEOs begin to feel very insecure and um, and begin to look around at their peers to determine who's addressing a particular problem effectively and they want to interact with those people. So uh, these we found that these peer-to-peer -peer learning systems at the executive level are extremely effective. Hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, I can see there is a strong emphasis on, on uh, what has been called by Vitold um, individually tailored uh, technical technical support i mean this isn't the key of the idea uh, at the center of the idea of uh, human security for all going from a state diplomacy security to an individual security wherever people live on, on the planet so i to focus maybe the next round a little bit uh, stronger to that uh, key aspect of uh, human security for all program and in that respect, maybe the second question, um, 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 what should be the, the key pillars and methods of education in technology? Um, you mentioned that already a little bit, but maybe now a little bit more focus on uh, the, the key aspects and methods in the education for, of uh, technology in respect of the individually tailored security for all. Okay. Go Probably ahead. Yeah. Start. <laughs> if right. you want to go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I wasn't sure who you were addressing that to, Ben, <laughs> but I'll, I'll yield. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. You've got yeah. them all. First of all, I, uh, I like very much uh, the statements of uh, Vitold and from both because um, we are going in the same direction. Uh, my experiences with virtual reality are really experiences of, of personalized um, interaction and uh, cognition in virtual reality because virtual reality uh, uh, is used to uh, put the person, to, to, to let the person look on the world from his personal view. Um, with the camera position. So this is already uh, offered by the technology. So um, to talk about the key pillars, um, uh, I would like to um, 
really go a little bit in details about technology, methodology, and content. So we have to distinguish these three topics. Um, the technology uh, has been used in the past uh, like uh, um, one solution for everything. So this will not anymore work. So uh, talking about solution, we have to have uh, the possibility for the education to configure the technological devices. Um, this uh, we can be done today with the smartphones in very easy way, uh, with different co configuration of apps and so on. But this is this will be probably the main line in the uh, using uh, in using technology for education in the future to have a personalized configured technological devices second uh, uh, it's a question of content and this content has to also to be personalized uh, as uh, Vito said, uh, each person learns in a different way. We are uh, not anymore living in the uh, old fashion university with frontal uh, education, uh, with mass education, and so on. Um, each, today, each person has individual way and individual access to knowledge. Uh, and therefore, the content must be also personalized, uh, and so therefore, the methodology um, we use for teaching has to cover exactly this uh, personalized view concerning the technology and the content. What is very important for me is just to put also this aspect in this, uh, into discussion. We are living in the uh, in the uh, world where the innovation cycles are are changing very fast. Each uh, year, uh, each month, each year, each second, uh, two, three years, the technology is changing radically and rapidly. This is um, much shorter than the educational time in university. Normally, we uh, spend about five years in, uh, for education in university. That means a big problem today in the uh, uh, in the education is that the content, the methodology and the technology used for teaching is some way old fashioned, is not anymore corresponding to the level of uh, technological development and innovation today. Um, this is very important to um, to address this issue, we have to really to very flexible uh, react towards technology, methodology and content. Um, and uh, also the second aspect is uh, I'm absolutely uh, convinced that in future we should not teach just knowledge, we sh should teach skills, because just to uh, accumulate knowledge is not enough. We have to use this knowledge to do uh, out of them. Uh, therefore, um, my statements concerning the key pillars are um, teaching new technological skills individually and teaching new technological skills in a new way. So, um, we personally, and I like it very much, uh, the statements until now about uh, digital twins, uh, cognitive digital twins. We talk also about hybrid uh, digital twins. Uh, this is the uh, the technological basis for the future where the twin, uh, twins uh, can assist people to better, um, better um, get and uh, process knowledge and derive skills out of them. Um, therefore, um, the Infrastructure for education has be, uh, should be really appropriate uh, for this time, uh, this type of uh, of teaching. Um, so uh, I do not want to talk so much, but I want just to put another two aspects concerning the uh, assi uh, assisting us uh, by digital twins or the cognitive twins. Uh, I put really the human machine interaction in the main focus because we learn through interaction. Uh, and we have to have the technology and the methodology to support the interaction of human or machine. From another side, this interaction should be done in a very intuitive way because uh, the human should uh, uh, should concentrate not on just using or uh, uh, serving technology, but uh, um, learning and uh, generating content. Um, I will stop on this <laughs> uh, on this point, and I'm really looking now for your yeah comments. Uh, um, maybe Paul does uh, next uh, um, your insight on the key pillars and methods of education on uh, technology for human security for all. Well, I'm I'm wrapped up in the in the human security for all campaign, so I've I've uh, spent a lot of time thinking about how to align education with 
the human security dimensions. And, um, and it, it's not difficult to do that. Um, uh, when you start thinking about the dimensions and how they relate to individual living and, and individual security. Um, so on the educational front, um, what we've tried to do is to um, align or come up with a human security dimension that fits with an educational objective. And uh, for example, uh, when training um, technicians uh, for field work, there's an emphasis on safety, which ties into the uh, human security health dimension. There's also an emphasis on proper handling of toxic materials. And so that kind of training is very important. Um, the emphasis on safety has really helped reduce the number of workplace injuries. So uh, it's not enough just to teach people technical skills in the workplace. You have to teach them how to apply those technical skills in a safe manner. Um, I, I also think that continuing education is important today for economic security because the half-life of uh, technical education today is very short. What we find is that we train somebody on a, a networking skill, for example, or a particular software platform, and a couple of years later, uh, there's been a transformation and a new training is required. So um, the idea that we need continuous lifelong, lifelong learning, I think is an idea that's permeating through the workplace environment and is affecting attitudes in companies about the types of educations that are really needed by employees that are coming into the workforce. The idea that somebody can go to school, to university or whatever and come out and be ready uh, even today for a job uh, in the technical field is kind of naive. I think that specialized training is always necessary um, to fit the needs of a company and uh, companies have reached a point where um, they aren't even requiring in many cases a university degree for certain types of highly paid jobs. They're just requiring um, an, an, an assurance of a level of intelligence, a certain level of character and an ability, a proven ability to master or having already mastered that technology. Um, I think that um, that in the case of consumer electronics now, there's an emphasis on personal security, whereas in the past, uh, for example, automated systems were, were focused on the George Jetson type uh, of uh, domestic um, uh, support that, um, that was popularized by science fiction today. There's much more of an emphasis on personal security when these home automation systems and even commercial automation systems are being designed. And on the commercial, on the um, on the environmental front, there's also uh, an emphasis uh, in the deployment of technology today on um, energy efficiency, and a lot of money is being spent. Uh, particularly in new construction in ensuring that uh, energy is utilized in a very efficient manner, that idle equipment is being turned off, that lights are being utilized efficiency, efficiently, that climate controls are being utilized efficiency, efficiently as well. So um, I think what I've stressed as I speak to business leaders is that the human security paradigm is a way to align your company strategically with uh, the needs of uh, society, but also with the aspirations of consumers and the regulatory environment. Yeah, thank you. Vito, please, the floor is yours. On the pill, key pillars and methods of education on technology for human security. Thank you very much. I, I like very much what Walt and, and Yves mentioned. It is, um, 
uh, we need to relearn various things very quickly. And IEEE, you probably know, Walt, that we have established three academies because of that, and continuing education plays a critical role. The idea over here is, uh, again, uh, when um, the Prussian model was introduced, one training or one education for a lifetime is gone. Um, as 40 years ago, Bucky Fuller discovered that uh, the knowledge rate of, of increase of knowledge in, is exponential. <laughs> um, in 1770, it was for a lifetime. When Bucky talked about it, it was still a lifetime. Today, everybody will have three jobs, um, many jobs. It is, it is not possible to learn everything for everything. So the personalization and the segmented education is absolutely critical. So it's a lifelong learning, not just uh, learning for life. It is, it is that um, commitment to it is important. And in, in that personalization of education and learning is also the foundation for experiential learning that you refer to already. It is a verification of the theory and the acquisition of experience. But above all, in my opinion now, is cooperation and collaboration. Uh, when I established the um, build, we had, we started building satellites. Uh, we discovered that not, no single discipline can do that. We have to, we have to include it. We, I had 130 students from 16 departments and they discovered instantly that without the other department, it could not be done. It has to be together. But in that process, it's not just doing it for convenience because we can't know all of us, all of that. It is the discovery of the others. And I think the education of today must be the collaboration, cooperation, because we need one another. It is not, I do a service for someone, I might. Um, but it is that component that is essential in it. It is the critical thinking in that process that also is enhanced. It is a critical thinking normally operates at a very shallow level. It is now moving from the shallowness of it into the depth to discover that there are monsters in the sea <laughs> that we have to deal. But that discovery it also leads to a fundamental human transformation it is not just that we are doing the job better with the technology and more securely with the technology. Another component is imagination and creativity, but not for making more money, but for making us better, us humans. The transformation must be us. We must discover that it is important to, to do it. And that led me to the idea of transforming the pyramid of knowledge to igloo of knowledge. Igloo is that thing that you build to, <laughs> to uh, survive in minus 50. Um, I live in a place where we have minus 50. <laughs> I know what igloo means. I know what it is important. If I don't know how to do it, I'll die. I die not eventually, I die tomorrow or today or in an hour. So those are the things that we must actually instill in our students that knowing and recognizing that we are not alone is extremely important. And finally, it is that design thinking, as you know, there was a very big movement also in industry, design thinking and the post-it idea is, is good enough. No, um, we must implement, test, improve with no waste or minimal waste. And then finally, uh, and this is now I've heard, I've been participating in many sessions. I heard that um, it is too expensive to, to change. No, uh, as of last week, I heard a number, $10 trillion will move us from fuel, fossil fuel to alternatives, electrical, wind, solar, hydrogen, 10 trillion. Our economy is 100 trillion, 10%. Our investment, as Gary mentioned, uh, into military is not just 1 trillion anymore, it's 2 trillion. If we would cut 1 trillion from it, we could do it for, for nothing. It is available. We have to ask now all of us to find that 10 trillion. 
let's find 12, 20 trillion to do it faster because that is survivability. That is the sustainability. It is not only personalization, but without the personalization, the awareness of each and every person, we have almost no chance. As, as, as we discussed, as, as uh, uh, Benno mentioned, um, the state, Canada, where I live, does not know me and probably shouldn't know me too much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want them to tell me what to do tomorrow. I ought to. My desire is to know with all my students and all my friends what we must do tomorrow, how we should be doing it without hurting everybody around us for the benefit of, of me or others. It is that transformation that I think was was established to, to move from the, from the life of fear, that fear will prevent us from destruction, to the awe that Herschel and other mentioned very often. I asked for wonder and you gave it to me. It is you means you, all of us sitting over here and listening to it will have a chance to dream about tomorrow that will be free of fear and will be secure that a person will feel the potential growing each hour, not each day, to do a little bit better. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, very interesting uh, points uh, you made, uh, all three of you. I think one is uh, we should, but we can't uh, deepen is, I mean, technology is very often linked to, to uh, solutionism, that we are solving existing problems technologically. But the future is not only about that, I guess. We have to dig deeper. We have to, to contribute to problem avoidance, as I, I, I put it. And technology is certainly, just in the last points you were making, we told, uh, and also Walt before, and, and Ivka, very much uh, demanded to, to contribute to that. From the me to we, as you put it and the connectivity. And there is another point that should be mentioned, maybe we don't have time now, but the race of echo chambers. If you have all these totalitarian regimes that are building echo chambers, that people are only listening to what they want to hear and they don't uh, are open to have critical, critical statements. So this is uh, technologically one, one of the big problems, I think, of for all ideas of democratic life and, and uh, democratic constitutions of, of political life. I have a question um, from Gary, especially to Vito, but to all of you. To what extent does current techno technical education include understanding of the potential social impact of the technology that is being thought, taught? This is a little bit uh, along the lines of what I was just trying to put, both in terms of potential threat and social benefit especially in respect of uh, artificial, artificial, artificial intelligence. The answer may be vary from the most advanced institutions and widely prevailing institutional practices. So if maybe each of you could uh, uh, give an answer to Gary, just questions, to what extent does current technological education include understanding of the potential social impact? of the technology that is being taught. So in short, what is the critical attitude to what you are uh, telling in class? <laughs> if I may say, uh, yeah, okay. go, go ahead, Ivka. Uh, okay, okay. Ivka. So, <laughs> it's a very, very good question. Um, well, um, in my understanding, uh, um, and I will make a parallel to the automotive industry because moving before moving to the university, I spent many years working for General Motors on the upper side. And uh, we had the practice of active and passive security. So, you know, we invest a lot uh, for safe and secure driving. Uh, and uh, therefore we have to really to analyze um, what are the main uh, aspects of uh, making a car more safety? 
uh, and we do not talk so much uh, about these issues in the education. That means uh, I, what I would, uh, I would like to address is uh, there is a possibility to create an environment, infrastructure, where we can take some uh, um, measures for uh, ensuring uh, passive security during the teaching with technology. But for me, most important is the active security. The active security me means understand and take self-responsibility. So um, for me, it's very important in future in dealing with technology, not to consider the technology just as a black box. This can be very dangerous. We have to understand now chat GPT, uh, everybody's talking about, but we have to understand this is just a, a text uh, text uh, model a modeling uh, tool. Um, this is not really this intelligence what the people think that is inside. Um, it is very important really to bring to the students, to the to the people, first of all, to be critical towards technology, to understand uh, how technology works, and then to take the responsibility if I use this technology, uh, for what reason. Um, this is uh, for me absolutely important um uh, how do we practice this uh, because we deal also very uh, with uh, innovative technologies which changes uh, a lot we created in my institute so called sandbox labs sandbox labs are um, labs where we do really in experimenting with technology in a very intuitive easy way playing with the technology but trying to understand very fast what are the main features and how to how to adapt these technologies uh, to the education i uh, uh, i wanted to put this also uh, into discussion because we have always to understand that um, um, teaching means also not only teaching uh, in uh, in time, but also teaching in space. So we have, of course, virtual spaces, but time to time to uh, ensure the collaborative and cooper uh, cooperative uh, way of teaching. We have to have such uh, really uh, appropriate uh, uh, spaces where people came together and uh, uh, make experience together. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Walt or... Vito, whatever you want. Okay, uh, so can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, yes, so Gary, uh, I wouldn't be able to go to a classroom if I would be teaching only skills and technology. Uh, even if about security, no, uh, it has to be more. Um, I uh, I could not get excited. I would be depressed. I wouldn't go to to the classroom at all. So teaching skills skills alone is not good enough. They go and come and go. So there has to be a deeper uh, reason for teaching. Teaching skills for the labor uh, market alone is not good enough because the markets change faster than we can really even adapt to it. Um, using uh, the AI and the tools uh, like Chat GPT, um, we should not fear it. We should uh, not use it for cheating. We should use it for a development of critical thinking and uh, saying how good actually it was. Uh, someone asked me, well, so are you saying that we should use Chat GPT in answering all of your questions? I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but then how would you know that uh, I, I, I do not cheat? I would ask Chad GPT, how much did you write it? So, uh, and I have other tools to, to, to do it. So it is, it is critical thinking that will matter. Then um, we, so we, should, we should not fear that it is important. And the fundamental idea over here is that um, the teaching for jobs must change now teaching for us, for humanity, for the, for the sustainability and security. This is a specific component that is, is extremely important. So I do teach, is it really a, a norm? Uh, I would say no, but we could use now all of the tools that we've just discussed and the, the personalized type, symbiotic, mimetic, uh, cognitive digital twins or digital assistants. I don't like the twin idea over here because it is not a twin. It is that component that could help an individual to grow, to become a better person that is on the way. And many of us are involved around the globe in that process. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we have a couple of- I would of, like uh, to answer Gary's question as well, Benno. 
sorry. Oh, go ahead. Well, I'd like to answer oh, sorry. Sorry. question sorry. Yes. very briefly. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I just no. want to say, just want to say that I think that um, that um, that the um, societal aspirations are the mother of technology. Uh, I think that what isn't understood is how technology is going to be used by bad actors. I don't think that that is um, always understood. It isn't even understood. I don't think when technology is developed, how it's going to be utilized for good. But I think it is assumed that it will be utilized for good. Um, and I think that's the motivation for it in the first place. But I, I don't think there's enough understanding of how technology can be utilized by bad actors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Any other that's, comments? That's why. That's why the, uh, I clearly see uh, the uh, technology of that is more intelligent, not just uh, spinning wheels, um, will be helpful in that process too, to identify the bad actors and talk to them, not kill them. Yeah, yeah. For me, the. The important points mentioned from my background is um, especially what has been uh, put forward, the awareness of the others from the me to, to we. I think technology, all modern or late modern technology is very subject centered. So the egocentric <laughs> is, is as, as a huge uh, power and to use technological devices to create new forms of community, a new form of societal constellations of societal interactions. That's, I think, a, a major uh, duty uh, ahead of us. And, uh, and especially what we didn't talk much uh, in this session is um, technological uh, devices as warning system to 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 in, enhance security of the individual wherever and what time they live, that will be of a major will have a major impact uh, in the spatial dimension. Uh, we see now with earthquakes are a, a, a really complicated issue in that respect. But we can see with earthquake what's happened if if the preparation is bad or not existing what the impact can be. And if you would have warning systems, I know for earthquakes, that's not, not so easy, but for many other things, it's, it's a, a, a possibility that could avoid many, many uh, destruction and many uh, uh, dead people, uh, potentially at least, right? Have you any comments to make a summary? Well, we are welcome. We have each of you have, I give one minute and then we are more or less in time when we finish. If can maybe, so, Beno, as, as, a, as you mentioned, uh, the don't... technologies that we discussed today um, will uh, satisfy the requirements that you just mentioned. It is, it is the warning. Not only that, it already exists. It is uh, the terrestrial uh, networks and space networks are involved in protecting or uh, alerting people to problems. But still, the com it comes down to that awareness, the, the st steam that awareness of others and working together. It, without it, we are still done. So we must move into that us uh, activity, us education, oriented towards not you and me, the, 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 the group that is on, connected today, but those who are not connected and the awareness that they need, uh, have needs too that we might not even know. It is that transformation into that new cooperative structure and the uh, movement from uh, reductionism into um, the um, interactive systems, complex systems, where minute change may, may affect many others and the bad actors, uh, bad intentions <laughs> might have greater influence than uh, the physical destruction. So it is the destruction of hope that I, I worry the most, rather than the destruction of me. I won't be here to worry if <laughs> I will be destroyed. Uh, but I think, but I worry about my grandchildren every time I see them and talk. He said, yeah. who are you? What will you do? Who are, who are we? 
if we would really continue on, on that line, I think there is hope. And I'm very grateful to to uh, Gary and, and you and, and all who are talking about it. We, we must talk. We must fight through, by, through words. Words may be very powerful. Thank you. Thank you all so much. I really enjoyed this session. Yeah. Really appreciate your hosting, Benno. And uh, all of you, thank you. Thank you for participation. Just, just for me, I, um, I my statement is uh, after uh, you know having this inspiring session as um, that uh, human first. Human is uh, the human is uh, uh, in the the main focus in the human, not on the technology. Uh, and I will add that technology to you to be used for education should be all, only trustful technology, as you said. Beno should be technology uh, which uh, is protecting, uh, is secure in protecting human uh, per definition, not uh, technology just to to be sold. Uh, and uh, we have really to fight for for this to have really the human um, yeah, um, oriented technology, which helps human really to grow up and not to, just to, uh, yeah, to make money out of technology. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much.